Welcome to De-Stress Your Business, the podcast where we show you how to get incredible results in your business without constant stress. I'm Alexis Kingsbury, a serial entrepreneur and founder at Air Manual, and I'm joined by my special guest today, Arthur Syra Iqbal. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, Alexis. How are you doing? Really good. It's so good to have you, uh, have you here. For, the, for those that don't know, Arthur is an expert in copywriting, an absolute master, specifically in how to write in a way that persuades prospects to take action and to buy. She is the author of the best-selling book, Mind Hack Marketing, How to Turn Customer Psychology into Breakthrough Sales, and has written a copy for, uh, and has written copy, not a copy of the book, but written copy for clients that has collectively brought in $125 million in revenue. However, when COVID hit uh, Arthur's clients, her business suffered a major setback, which nearly broke her. However, Arthur used an approach that in less than six months has helped her to a record-breaking quarter and has now completely removed the stress out of getting new clients. So we're going to dig into that today. So Arthur, uh, take us back to when COVID hit, what happened to your business? Oh, sorry, I didn't catch the last thing that you said. So uh, take us back to when COVID hit, what happened to your business? Yeah, so basically I lost like five clients overnight. Um, essentially what happened was the conversation kind of went, oh my God, we have, we're putting, uh, you know, we're putting all our staff in furlough. We're literally having to shut the doors and we're so sorry, but we don't need your services anymore. And I was like, oh my God, like, what do I do? Right. That's like every, like every business's worst scenario is having to right. shut the door. Right. Um, but also because of my background, I know that the worst thing that you can do during that time is to stop marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. It takes time to build traction. It takes really does take time to actually get yourself out there and start creating a name. And, you know, I started doing a lot of, uh, you know, research and, and, and really looking into it. And I realized that actually recessions and depressions are where the millionaires are made, right? Yeah. Um, normally because they take a completely different approach. They are very agile, they're nimble, they're able to pivot, they're able to basically turn things around and hone in on one specific thing. And I thought, right, well, that's exactly what I need to do, right? I can't, I can't survive like this. This is, this is ridiculous, right? Because otherwise I'm going to have no business and obviously we didn't know at that time so this is literally right at the beginning of lockdown and I was like they're saying a few months we don't know how long this is going to last that's just being realistic right and obviously we knew, we know that this lasted a very long time right um so I was like okay well I can't I can't just do nothing so I thought right I'm going to do a completely organic approach everyone's already on social right they're already there people are already on places like facebook um, I, mean, I have to admit i'm not really active on linkedin but facebook i am and i was like right let's turn it to my advantage um literally had a facebook group and i was like right i think it's about time i put some serious love into this group and that's literally what kicked off what was going to become and, and still is a major part of the income that comes in through my business. Um, so the strategy really was very simple, right? Get your ideal clients into the group and essentially wow them, blow their socks off with amazing content. And so I did this whole, you know, build a bulletproof business on lockdown series where for 35 days straight, I posted like insane value inside of that group that was designed to basically cost no money. So the whole the whole purpose was to show the people who are inside of that group that, look, it doesn't matter if it's locked down. It doesn't matter if things are tight right now. There's all these things that you can do that doesn't rely on you having to put money behind it or it's extremely low cost. And let's just like, let's just get your business to the best it can possibly be. Uh, oh my God, it worked, right? Um, so it kind of like, really started creating a buzz people were starting to pull other people into the group and then I did this thing where at the end of the 35 days I literally told everyone right I'm going to be taking all the content out of the group that was very strategic by the way so I was like I'm going to remove all the content from the group we're going to be doing things in a slightly different way and if you want all of this you've literally got like a week to download everything and save everything um, because it's all going to go 
So we took everything out. So a week later, we, we literally took everything out of the group. And then we started doing lives where I would say, right, who wants a website teardown? Who wants me to look through a landing page or something like that and give you feedback on how to make it better? All free, right? So every time I'd put a request up for a teardown, I'd literally have like a dozen people responding wow. saying, oh my God, can you please check my, can you please check my website? Can you please check my website kind of thing? Can you check my landing page? Can you check this? Can you check that? And then I would do these lives where I would break down line by line and, you know, literally section by section, telling them what was wrong, telling them what they needed to change. And I remember there was this one guy who sent me a message and because I'd torn his website down and he said, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know how I got in your group even but you're amazing and I want to work with you. Can we get on a call? That's and amazing. I was like, okay. And I was like, that was amazing, right? Um, and then it just it just kind of blew up from there. So people who I was doing all of these amazing things for were now starting to book calls with me and they were like, can you help us with getting this right? And literally that's what kicked off the whole thing. That's what got the ball rolling. I think, um, you know, the, the first, so in that quarter, it was, it was a difficult quarter, quarter not going to lie. It was, it was hard. Um, and I actually managed to get myself as well, like two sort of side gigs with uh, one with a very well-known company who I'm, it's a multi eight figure company who I'm still working with, I'm pleased to say, and, a, a, and another uh, multi seven figure uh, brand. And I went in as a coach there. So those two sort of gigs combined was giving me, you know, you know, financial stability in the sense that, you know, I was able to cover all of my expenses. But then outside of that, uh, all the stuff that I was doing inside of my group and getting like super active on my on my Facebook profile as well, really trying to engage people, creating that engagement, pulling people into my group kind of thing. Oh my God, that paid off so massively. Q3 was a record breaking quarter, you know. Um, it was insane. It was like going from like literally no income to having a, you know, the best quarter I'd ever had in my entire life, bar none. It was insane. It was bonkers. That's incredible. So... I mean, you, you said that in that uh, when uh, when COVID hit and you lost those clients and so on. Um, firstly, just take us back to uh, your mindset at that that time, because you know we've known each other uh, quite a while, so I know that your yeah. your attitude and so on generally is really yeah. solid. It's you know you're you're yeah. always you always see a uh, a route through and uh, and your. Yes you know, incredibly tenacious and you'll, you'll find the answer. And so as a result, I think it's easy hearing the story as we do now, particularly with positive yeah. ending, um, to assume that you kind of went, oh, well, I've taken a knock, turn that round immediately. I'm yeah. like, is, is that what happened? Or, uh, you know, how did the, what, what did it feel like in terms of stress levels at the time and, and, and why? What, was, what were your concerns yeah. and worries? It was, I mean, yeah, it, I was super stressed out because you know what it is? Like I didn't have at that time, like really great cash flow in the business. And so I did, it's not like I had like this pot of money just sat there, um, that, you know, could see me through. And I was like, this is bad, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So I pulled in. So, so one of the guys who, who he actually works on my team now, um, David, amazing, amazing guy, strategic advisor, someone that I always, you know, I, I really do rely very heavily on his uh, expertise and guidance, really. Um, and then I have a coach as well, Kevin, absolutely amazing. You know, you know, Kevin, we both know him. And like, he really did challenge me to just kind of like, look, you know what, it's, it's about how you approach this whole situation right and I'm I, you know for me my my stress levels were quite high I mean single parent two children I'm thinking I've got kids to feed right I need to look after them what I can't do is I can't shut shop and I can't just allow everything I don't know how long this is gonna take and for me I think the number one thing that was like right okay step one let's create st some stability and that's when I sort of like put myself out there and I was like right I'd like to get some gigs and I actually by the way I got onto indeed.com right now I know it sounds like almost blasphemous for for a entrepreneur yeah. to, to think about going back to work yeah um 
was like, at that point, I actually didn't care. I was like, well, I need something, you know? And so I found, um, and I didn't know what company it was. It's actually a very world famous company that, that ended up hiring me. Um, you know, but I submitted my CV, I think they had hundreds and hundreds of applications and I was literally the only one that got hired, um, which was insane. Right. I absolutely loved it. I was like, this is fantastic. But it was part time. That was the main thing. Amazing. It was like part time. Cause that, yeah. Because that's what I was going to ask is, and did, did they hire you as either a full timer or part time employee or at what stage did a conversation happen that, mean that, that meant that? you kind of go, actually, you know, I have been doing this as a business and you can buy it yeah. as a service through that. Um, like where, yeah. where, how did that, how did that happen? Yeah, well, it was really interesting. So I think sometimes you have to just get your foot in the door. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. So I was like, right, okay, part-time, we'll do part-time. I got in there and here's what, something really interesting happened actually. Um, they hired me independently outside of my contract. So my contract was basically to do client acquisition. Yeah. That was my whole thing. So it was training, development, that kind of stuff for their students, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and, and they're a very well-known influencer in their space. And like, they knew that this was my background, like that I do copy and stuff. And I was like, but I don't want to focus on that. You know, this is what I do all the time. But what I want to actually do is I want to do something that's less reliant on me doing a, a ton of typing kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, outside of that, because they knew my background, they knew the kind of results that I'd had. They hired me. I'm not, I can't mention because I'm under strict NDA, but... If I mention the name, if I name drop right now, you know, it's a very famous author. They they did a collaboration with someone He's one of the world's top coaches mm -hmm. and they did a collaboration with him and they got me to write the funnel. Nice. And um, yeah, they sold out, completely sold out. And they sold out three times with that same funnel. So they made an, an insane amount of money. And I was like, that's fantastic. Then they hired me for another funnel independently. Awesome. Right. Then another, right? <laughs> and then the conversation, yeah. And then the conversation became, and it was actually me that did it. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be under contract anymore. I'd like to go in a, as an agency. And I remember the conversation that I had with, with the CMO. She was like, okay, so are you saying you no longer want to be under contract and you want to submit a proposal uh, to us as an agency, you know, with your full agency rates? And I was like, yes. And I submitted this proposal. It was eye-watering sum of money and they accepted wow and yeah and then i even got paid a 5k performance bonus as well because i smashed all the targets so yeah it was yeah it was fantastic <laughs> and well these years later i'm still working with them yeah. and they've literally just commissioned me again for a really big project and i've been working with some world-class marketers uh through this company as well it's it's been incredible. Honestly, I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful because, you know, that opportunity, honestly, I think God's really looking after me. I'll say that. <laughs> well, but, but it's so uh, quite possibly, although um, you've done a lot of the hard work yourself there. <laughs> so the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the things that I love uh, from that are firstly, the humility that you had to have to kind of go, you know what, I'm, I can't bank on a sudden piece of work coming through the business. Yeah. We've had this situation where we've largely been looking after um, five yeah. major clients and then some uh, small ones and the five major aren't going to be going ahead and therefore we're in a really tough trading uh, situation. And so you had the humility yeah. to say, actually, I'm not above getting a job and particularly a part time yeah. job while I'm while I'm rebuilding what I'm doing with the okay. amazing benefit of because you were working in the same uh, like field as uh, or, or similar field to where your business was, it meant that there was yeah. uh, synergy and opportunities to then uh, for them to then become a client. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and I think that's so smart. And what the the other thing I really love about this story, which we'll go perhaps go on to next, is that that on its own would have been a huge achievement if you had basically yeah. just focused on. Um, getting that part-time job, that get provided some income yeah. while still trying to do some of the uh, the work through your business. And then, as you say, yes. then going back to full business and uh, and selling it. That on its own would be an amazing achievement. Yeah. And, you know, what a fantastic result out of such a difficult situation. Yeah. But that isn't where you stopped, is it? Like during no. during that, that additional time that you had, because you're working part-time, as you said, you, you were running free 
um, campaigns and content providing and help and so on for yes. your existing audience so that you were you were nurturing yep. that audience in their hour of need um, and cementing your your positioning which is really powerful but there was something else that you did as well which um, you told me about and I said well we've, we've got to we've got to do a podcast on this and, and talk about it yeah. because it, it was such a simple step-by-step -step approach that particularly yeah. for the stage of business that you're at has been absolutely transformational in terms of the oh, stress in terms of acquiring customers right oh yeah totally so, totally so we'll di we'll dive into that just before we do um yeah like let, just to touch on the stress of when you haven't got customers like as you said like particularly a single parent two kids um not you know not loads of cash in the bank all that kind of stuff like yeah. that is a very stressful situation to be in when you're suddenly yes, losing all that revenue and having people around you like your coaches was absolutely key but for any business yeah. owner not even just losing clients but the stress of where will your next client come from i think is so yeah, significant i think that oh my um, God, yeah. you know I've, I've been in so many situations and worked with so many business leaders where the method through which they acquire their clients is understandably either not yeah. scalable or requires on significant effort like whether it's yeah. going and doing networking whether it's keeping in touch with all of your existing clients and all these things or running a particular new marketing campaign or running you know attending an event or whatever it is and so you you never like for many businesses they they can't um forecast how many new customers and leads they're going to be getting week to week yeah. month to month and exactly that improves over time and you know with uh with my software businesses we've got got to that point but it took a long time to get there yeah and what i love yeah. is within i think it's within a three month period you went from yeah. basically no stream of clients to a stream of yeah. clients that was so consistent that you've had to turn away clients is that accurate before we yeah. delve into the yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> That is accurate. And I had I've, even now I've had uh, uh, literally last six months, I had to put people on a waiting list. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, and in terms yes. of then your ability to uh, A, increase prices, B, choose only the work that is most in line with your offering, oh, yeah. C, consider opportunities for growth and hiring and outsourcing work and like. Yeah. Your yes. your options for growth and and or just enjoying the journey and so on go up yeah. uh, in a uh, hugely right. Oh yeah, massively, massively, massively. Brilliant. So as a result, for anyone listening who's in the situation where, if you had a steady stream of clients, you would then be able to do things in your business that you can't currently do, whether it's uh, being able to hire, whether it's just being able to uh, pay the bills, whatever it is um this uh, uh this then becomes relevant so talk us through step by step and uh Arthur, i hope uh, i hope you won't mind or i'm sure you won't mind because you're awesome uh that i have taken uh, based on our previous discussion i've taken what we discussed and turned it into a step-by-step -step checklist which we'll make available Fantastic. as a oh, I love that. Awesome. Oh, I love it. so we'll, we'll make that available on the, as a link in the show notes because i i love that um what you'll describe is a daily yeah habit that doesn't take very long yes. and yet got you no. these incredible results so talk talk us through yeah. what you did that meant that you were able to build a following and create connections and nurture that in a way that yeah. previously you hadn't done so it's very simple actually look you know that saying if you want oranges you go to the orange market right you don't go to the apple market so the first step is really understanding your ideal customer right who's your ideal client who are the people who are most likely to buy from you and then once you've identified who that pool of people are then it's about creating organic connection with them right and I would say, look, it doesn't matter what kind of social platform that you're using, because actually the strategy that I'm about to share with you is literally workable across platforms. So I've seen people do this on TikTok. I've seen people do it on Instagram and LinkedIn and still get amazing results. Right. So it's essentially connecting. Right. So the first step really is connection. You've got to be sending out 15 to 20 connection requests per day. Um, just connecting with potential ideal clients because actually what you're doing is you're building up an audience of people who would potentially be interested in your offers, right? That's the first step. The second step is really engaging with their content. That's really important because, you know, you want to tell the algorithms that, hey, look, 
I'm interested in this person and therefore by default, you know, my stuff is also going to get shown to them, right? That's how it works, right? And then the third step really is it's about creating amazing content yourself, content that gives ahas, content that gives insights, you know, content that really educates, informs, problem solves. Like th This is where you really need to know like what is important to your ideal customer, right? It's my whole book is all about this, right? And essentially just sharing very high value, you know, content, posting it on your, on your, on your profile, asking people to take that next step with you, whether it's dropping something in the comments or, you know, just like raising the hand and saying, hey, I, I'm interested in this. I want this. And then, you know, the next step is to engage with them, because one of the things that you have to do is you have to really, you know, get people to you have to basically just like work with the algorithm. Right. So engage with the people who dropped you comments, send them a message. This is not cold messaging. So I just want to make that really clear. Right. Because I think that's a bit creepy. Right. You know, like you're minding your own business and someone drops you a message saying, hey, you know, are you interested in this? No, absolutely not. And, you know, I don't know anyone that really kind of like works like that. This is the opposite. You're putting out amazing value and you're asking people to raise their hand. So when you like get in touch with them, actually, it's fantastic because guess what? They the one, they're the ones that actually got in touch with you, not the other way around. Right. So now you're going at it from where they are at. Right. You're meeting them where they're at. And the first time I did this activity, it was fascinating. I did this inside of a group, actually. It wasn't even on my private profile. So you can do this in, in groups. You can do this in private profile. But be a bit careful with groups because, you know, they, 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 they can be a little bit, you know, the admin can sometimes be a little bit iffy um, about you promoting yourself, right? Um, so that's the thing that you do have to check. But I remember doing this and, like, I said, like, I've got these five tips on how to um, make more money using email and by the way, if you found these helpful, I've got this amazing free PDF. It's really detailed. If you want it, just, you know, drop me a comment below and I'll reach out to you. And I had 65 people put their hand up and wow. said, I want this. Right. And I was like, OK, fantastic. So I literally spent all weekend <laughs> sending these 65 people messages. And out of those people, I got, uh, was it 13 or 14 calls booked? And yeah, and then uh, two of those people ended up buying from me. Brilliant. So that little weekend activity, I made about 6K in that, in, that, in that one weekend, which is amazing. And then on my private profile, it was same thing, right? But what I was doing, and, and so this is, look, you can do it one of two ways. Either you get people on the calls, you know, through through the way that you're speaking to them, or you can pull people into your group. And so what I was doing is I was siphoning people from my profile into my group, right? So the high value, so it's like, you know, it's an enclosed environment. And then what I was doing was literally just like dropping, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, like special thing. It's like um, I'm doing like a, a, a scaling intensive. If you're interested, you know, you know, just drop me a, a comment and I'll reach out. The first post that I put up like that inside of my group mm -hmm. resulted in 13 people booking a call. Right. And that one activity made me about sixteen thousand pounds, yeah. which was insane. Phenomenal. Yeah, I, I I love it, and and I, I love that the as you said, you, you know, you start off by saying you need to be sending ten, fifteen friend requests, you know, per day. Um, and I yeah. remember when we spoke before, the thing you told me was it, it's all about the quality, it's all about the fit, it's about identifying yes. who are the right people. And so to some extent, everything else is about is about that. It's about how do you yeah. make sure that they are. And I remember you said that you actually started, um, uh, there's a variety of ways in which you approached it, but one way was to go find groups where your ideal customers hang out, as you say, oh, yeah. going to the orange market, as, uh, as you described. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then posting engaging, interesting content, not selling, because yeah. uh, I, I, I um, appreciate that the example you gave there was a bit more of a, a sell in the sense that you were offering a piece of content. Um, but I know that in other, in other examples, you literally just share great content. And then anyone That's that comments, likes, anything, they're getting a, a connection request because they yeah, you know, you just, then engage. You just a connection you know, request, and you exactly. engage with other people's content and so on. So as a result, even from an admin's perspective, you're adding value to the group, right? From their perspective, yeah. what do they see? Mm -hmm. They see someone adding uh, valuable content that's relevant, that's not promotional, yeah. and engaging with the content of others in the group. That's yeah. being a good group member. The bit yeah, that serves definitely. you is then anyone who engages with your content is getting a friend request. 
Um, yes. And then uh, uh, presumably it's at that point you've then got, uh, well, a couple of options. One is once they've friend requested you, they're then going to get all the content that you post on your own profile or at least a percentage of them will. Um, yes. And you've also got a choice on whether to direct message them and offer them something else like a call yeah. or a uh, some additional content or the book or whatever yeah. it is. But I think yeah. that is so powerful and simple as well because I think that... Yeah. The idea of sending connection requests feels a like where do I even start? Where do I find the people to to send to? Yeah. But also, and and then so what? You know, it's going to take me so long to add fifteen people a day, and da da da, da oh, and then nothing happens. Minutes, and of course, the reality yeah. is that bit is quick when you follow these steps, and you're exactly. getting your ideal customers, and they're constantly then in your network of people who are then receiving your content over time so even if you don't reach out directly they may put their hand yeah. up at some point right exactly exactly and not just that i think uh, and i think i do think this is important to mention sometimes people will they'll not even engage with you but they're going to reach out anyway and that happened to me so many times right so i had people who were asking to hire me or wanted to work with me or wanted to book a call with me and i'm like but I've never seen you. Yeah, I've never right. actually engaged with any of my content, right? The thing is, you don't know who's watching, mm. right? So inside of my group, I had um, a, a multi-seven-figure entrepreneur inside of my group who was watching me very closely and just suddenly reached out and said, Arfa, you've been doing some fantastic things. I would love to have a chat. Can we have a chat? Um, because I th I've got an amazing opportunity for you. And I think I think this would actually be really good for you. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, so we ended up getting on a call. And, you know, he said, would you like to coach my my students? And I was like, OK. And we and we agreed to a co we had a coaching agreement. And so I, I worked with uh, his business. Actually, I'm still working with his business. Right. Um, and that was like very intensely just like coaching. And I was like, oh, my God, phew, because like. Then I had this like this this one gig where I would applied through Indeed and I got that. And then I had this one as well. And so that is what gave me the stability. And then on top of that, all of the activities that I was doing, you know, either through my group or on my profile, that was getting me noticed left, right and center. And people were just like they were all over it. I'm telling you, they were all over it. It was fantastic. Honestly, I've had like major, major companies like reaching out to me and they've never engaged with my stuff. Yeah. Like we need to have a chat, we need to have a chat, you know? So here's the thing, you just don't know who's watching you. Sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit, oh, I'm putting all this stuff out and I'm not getting a lot of engagement, but actually you don't know who's watching. That's awesome, I love that. And and as you say, the impact's huge. A, it got you out of a hole in a difficult period. Yes, um, all. But but I know that it's uh, it's carried on right. Like you still now yeah. are getting constant stream of leads. In fact, I mentioned earlier, uh, you're you're having yeah. to turn away or put people on a waiting list, um, which yeah. leads me to the question. Like, you know, uh, as I say, I'll I'll share the steps and the and some of that detail as a checklist because I I genuinely think people can use it just as a you know put put a note in oh, your sweet. calendar, link to the checklist, and just follow it every day, yeah. and you'll you'll start building this up. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, uh, do you still follow this approach? And uh, no, the, the question is slightly leading because I know that you don't. So why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I still follow the approach, right? Because at the end of the day, if it's not broken, why would you mess with it? Right. <laughs> but, so, but you're not still doing the sending 10 to 15 requests per day and, and so on. Right? No, 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 no. It's actually gotten to the point now because I'm getting close to my sort of friends limit yeah, I think on, there's a on limit Facebook. 5,000, isn't there? 5,000, yeah, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm nearly there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not too far off from there. Now it's kind of the opposite where people are sending me a ton of friend requests and I'm so picky about who I say yes to. I'm like, okay, is this someone that could potentially add value to me? Yes, uh, you know, is it a potential ideal client? Yes, right, okay, accept. And anyone else, it's a no. Yeah. I just, just decline everyone else, yeah, exactly. But you'd be surprised, like, I saw, um, so one of my biggest clients is one of the first biggest deals that I'd managed to close. Um, this person actually dropped a message inside of uh, a Facebook group saying, hey, you know, I'm, I've just read Story Brand by Donald Miller. It's fantastic. No idea how to implement this in my business. Does anyone know how to do that? And I responded and I went, I know how to do it. I've done the workshop, right? I can definitely help you. Anyway, we ended up getting on a call. He ended up um, uh, purchasing an assessment from me. So it was like a, a business assessment. Um, and then 
you know, that was one of the biggest deals that we closed. And he wired the whole lot. It was like multi five figures. And he literally just wired the whole lot nice. in one go. And that, that, that project took, uh, you know, it, it took a few months to, to, to actually um, put into place. And there's a whole team of us working on this. But I'm telling you, it just what it does for your self-esteem and what yeah. it does for your confidence is, is huge, you know. And to think that it all started from a conversation. Yeah. I love that. That's so good. Just incredible. And, uh, and so uh, thank you for sharing in detail uh, how you did it and some of, uh, some of the various routes. For any business leader that's listening who wants to create a steady stream of clients, is this what you would recommend that they do as a starting point? Are there other approaches that you would uh, suggest? What, should, you know, what, what, would, what would you recommend? And I appreciate that it depends on a lot of context and, and so on, but like, yeah. where does this rank in terms of approaches and the, and the relative scheme of things? Because one of the challenges with marketing is there's always a thousand different things you can do, right? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Look, I would say, look, it, it really does depend on your goal, right? You know, so for some, like one of my clients, they're spending about a million a month um, in advertising revenue. And you know what, that's the, the organic approach wouldn't work for them because it's too slow, right? So you've got to look at what stage the business is at, right? If you are a newbie, you're a startup, or you are in the early stages of your business, or even if you're sort of low six figures, I would 100% recommend the organic approach because you're not having to spend money, right? It is the long, slow burn approach. But guess what? You are creating masses yeah yeah you're creating masses of value but at the same time what you're doing is you're also you're minding you're mindful of your cash flow right that's really important because that's the lifeblood of your business right the customers are a lifeblood of your business but also the cash is so you're maintaining both right um so it's the low and slow approach i would recommend that regardless of what level your business is at you still have to be an epic producer of content you look at people like brendan bashard right they're doing so amazing like they you know one of the top top experts in the world and he's so prolific on youtube and then he posts everything on every literally everything goes onto social right and so you look at these like people who are like world class and they still do the organic, but they don't rely on it. And there's the difference, right? So they've got multiple channels that they're pulling people in. I think the most important thing that you have to look at as well is like, look, if you want to go fast, then you have to put money behind it, right? Um, but you have to have a proven process. I think that's that's very key. You've got to know how to put a pound into this like advertising machine and then pull out two, three, four, five, ten times the amount, right? Um, and that's what makes you profitable, okay? That's ultimately, that's that's what you're looking at. Um, but I think this is an approach that everyone can get started with. I don't, I don't know anyone that wouldn't be able to benefit from from doing this, you know? And the nice thing is, is that it doesn't take a lot of time, right? I've sold workshops and, you know, I have like an inner circle program. It's like a, it's a monthly coaching um, and it's a, it's a sizable investment. And we did the entire launch. Everything was done through Facebook, which is insane, right? Now, I do believe that everyone should be building their email list because that's an asset that you own. And I think if you're serious about growing and you're serious about, you know, really scaling your business and, and having something that is not reliant upon like you know the algorithms and that kind of thing then building your email list is definitely the way to go it's a, again you know it's an asset that you own and you can nurture it and you can pull out as much money from it as you possibly can you know i've had months where for whatever reason you know things have been a little bit tight or whatever i've sent out a couple of emails hey presto someone books a call and you know uh, you know you, you you get some of that uh, you know work coming in right which is fantastic when it happens but i think for any entrepreneur who's serious about marketing, but this is what I do day in, day out. My number one piece of advice is, look, we've got a recession looming, right? This could last for years. It could turn into a depression. But like I said at the beginning, it's, you know, the recessions and the depressions where the millionaires are made. The worst thing that you can do is to stop marketing. That is actually the worst thing that you can do, right? So pick two or three things that you know that you can do and you can do it consistently and just Love keep, keep working it. Such good advice. And I, and I also really like that you, as you highlighted, this, this approach that we're, we're sharing and, and the, the steps, um, <clears throat> as you say, for a, for a smaller business, can work on its own to provide a decent stream of income. Um, yes. But actually, whatever level you're playing at, so even 
you know, for like for one of my software businesses, you know, uh, we're we're seven figure revenues, and so in theory, you might well acquiring one yeah. or two customers, um, you know, a month is not is not going to move the needle um, uh, there. However, no. it's all about level, right? If I if I applied the same yeah. approach, but said rather than try to get my ideal customer, my ideal end customer, what if I used it to get my ideal yeah. strategic partners? And then and then suddenly you go, oh, oh my yeah, God, suddenly I'm just creating <laughs> tapping into this network. So I think whatever level you're yeah. playing at, I, I think that what I really like is that yeah. this is basically a game of saying, who do you want to have more conversations with? And, and you know, wh whatever stage you're exactly. at in, in business and then say, OK, yeah. and where do they hang out? The orange market and then follow this pro the, yeah. this process yeah. to uh, create, share content, engage, connect build up that list, share more content, and uh, get people to self-select and do a bit of follow-up on the, on the ones that engage the most. I think it's really, really smart, um, but yeah. that's not surprising because you're an incredibly yeah. smart person. Um, speaking of which, <laughs> Arthur, uh, how can people connect with you and learn more about uh, more from you? Because uh, there's, a, there's a lot to learn. Um, obviously, you're approaching your uh, uh, friend limit on Facebook, so a connection request. May not, may not get a, uh, a positive response. So, how, how should people uh, connect and learn more? Yeah, so I think that the easiest way to connect with me is actually via Facebook. So, if you go to my private profile, so Arfa Saira Iqbal, um, and in the banner, if you click the link on the banner, it'll take you straight through to my group. So, you can go join my group from there. Um, that's definitely going to be the easiest thing. We we normally do like a, a weekly marketing show called Conversion Therapy in there, where we go live, we talk about different things um, that are impacting sort of your business right now, and, and, and we add that continual value. Um, and also, you can go to my website, arfasairaiqbal.com, or if you want to go grab a copy of my book you'll find it on amazon and that's available Fantastic. worldwide Love it. well thank you so much for joining me today arthur uh we've uh, you've provided some great insight uh, into how you managed to uh cope manage get out of a really difficult situation when covid hit and as a result yeah. take something that's normally incredibly stressful in business that of uh, get, getting a constant stream of clients uh, and turn it into a, a process that's really worked for you. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing it with everyone. Oh, you're very welcome. My, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. I loved it. Thank Brilliant. you for having well, me. Brilliant. Uh, well, as uh, Arthur says, please do check out her website at uh, arthursairaiqbal.com um, and also uh, her groups on Facebook. We'll provide some links to those in the show notes. We've also got the a simple daily checklist that you can use to engage uh, on Facebook, although you could use it on other social media sites uh, daily yes. to grow your followers and track new clients. Uh, you can find that at airmanual.link forward slash templates forward slash gain hyphen Facebook hyphen followers. Don't worry, we'll put it as a link in the show notes. Otherwise, as uh, uh, regular listeners will know, we run a weekly webinar on how to free up 50 hours per week and remove the constant stress of running a business without slowing down growth. Uh, it's typically every Wednesday at 1pm UK time, although I think the next one I'm running is, happens to be on Thursday. But you can find out more and register at www.airmanual.co forward slash webinar. And a final note for our podcast listeners. As a new podcast, uh, I do need your help. Uh, Paddy and I do need your help. Uh, if you found the content today valuable, please just take one minute to leave an honest review. Uh, this will help the podcast get more visibility and ultimately help more people. Otherwise, until next time, have fun. <laughs>